from Yahoo News. They report, quote, the House voted Wednesday to censure Representative Paul Gosar after the Arizona Republican posted a violent cartoon video that depicted him killing Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and attacking President Biden. The resolution passed 223 to 207 with two Republicans, Representative Liz Cheney and Adam Kissinger, of course, uh, joining all uh, 221 Democrats voting in favor of Gosar's censure. Representative Dave Joyce, who sits on the House Ethics Committee, voted present. Three Republicans did not vote. The measure stripped Gosar of his committee assignments, including a seat on the House Oversight Committee, a panel which he had served on which he had served alongside Ocasio-Cortez. Okay, so this is um, what the House of Representatives concerned itself with yesterday. All right, and and many Democrats took turns giving impassioned speeches discussing in somber and, and firm tones the inexcusable, violent, threatening, dangerous, terrible meme that Paul Gosar retweeted. Before we go any further, we should probably play that uh, meme for you, just so you understand what we're talking about. It is a jokey video, apparently made as a, as a parody based on some kind of anime show. I'm not familiar with the show. And uh, it shows Gosar as some kind of, I don't know, action hero, a ninja or something. And uh, at one point in the cartoon, it, well, rather, at one point, a cartoon with Gosar's face attached hits another gar- cartoon with AOC's face attached with a sword. Okay, very dangerous stuff. Parental advisory stickers all over this thing. But let's, uh, let's just give it a watch. Here it is. My God, horrifying. That's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. So while inflation skyrockets, cargo ships remain jammed in our ports, drug epidemic kills 100,000 Americans a year, dozens of other very real crises grip our nation, Congress spent the day talking about uh, this cartoon. And Nancy Pelosi kicked things off, shaking her head, saying that this is a sad day. It's a sad, sad day for Congress. And she's right, actually. It is a very sad day for Congress, but not for the reason she thinks. And she continued by drawing a connection to, what do you think she connected this to? You just take a guess. January 6th, of course. She said, quote, depictions of violence can foment actual violence and jeopardize the safety of elected officials as witnessed in this chamber on January 6th, 2021. It is inconceivable that a member of our community would wish to repeat the violence of that dark day. Now, we're not going to test our intestinal fortitude by playing too many clips of these Democrats sobbing over a meme cartoon on Twitter, but we do have to play at least, I think we have to at least suffer through a little bit of AOC's remarks, because she, after all, was the victim, uh, the quote-unquote victim of this cartoon, and that is an utter that she is always eager to milk, and let's watch her do that now. I've been serving in this body just under three years. Not three years enormous amount has happened. But in response to the Republican leader's remarks when he says that this action is unprecedented, what I believe is unprecedented is for a member of House leadership of either party to be unable to condemn incitement of violence against a member of this body. It is sad. It is a sad day in which a member who leads a political party in the United States of America cannot bring themselves to say that issuing a depiction of murdering a member of Congress is wrong and instead decides to venture off into a tangent about gas prices and inflation. What is so hard What is so hard about saying that this is wrong? This is not about me. This is not about Representative Gosar. But this is about what we are willing to accept. This is not about me. (laughs) This is not about me, as I use the word me and I uh, 72 times in my 10-minute speech about me. 
Yeah, we really can't. On second thought, we should not be playing clips of uh, Alexander Kaiser Cortez when we are broadcasting from, you know, the uh, the sixth floor of a hotel room where I'm, when I'm right next to a window because the urge to jump out is sometimes overwhelming when I'm listening to this person. A sad, sad day. A sad day. An incitement of violence. Democrats, of course, are not satisfied to call the cartoon merely inappropriate or crass or vulgar. No, they have to make it into a terrorist act. They have to pretend that Gosar was actually threatening himself. He was, he, he was himself threatening to stab AOC with a sword or encouraging other sword-wielding assailants. This meme was actually a message to Gosar's team of secret ninjas calling on them to finally launch their long-planned attack. That's the way Democrats tried to present it. And when most Republicans, aside from the usual suspects, Cheney, Kinzinger, uh, refused to join the censure, that sent them into even more furious spasms of outrage. AOC accused Republicans of nihilism for uh, not being angry enough about the Twitter meme. And all the Democrats were very upset, pretending to be very upset anyway, uh, that Republicans would not, would not join, would, would not join them in being that upset. But Republicans were right, of course, to not go along with this. Why? I mean, is it because congressmen ought to be posting with anime memes? You know, is that, is, that, is, that a, is that a thing ideally that we'd be doing? No, I mean, it doesn't bother me personally. I think it's kind of funny. But in a, in a perfect world, it would not be unreasonable to say, yeah, you know, that's a little inappropriate. It's kind of crass and childish. Let's not do that, you know. Yet in this world, which is far from perfect, even if you feel that way about the meme, you can't say it when Democrats demand that you say it. You can't bark on command like a trained puppy because then you are willfully participating in a charade. You are assuming a role in their stage play. AOC called it nihilism, that Republicans will not condemn inappropriate behavior. But that's not what's going on here. It's more that they are refusing to be a part of the Democrats' nihilism. If the Democrats in Congress actually cared about incitements of violence and about crass and inappropriate behavior by its members, and they condemned every such example, and they were so stringent about it, so respectful of the rules of decorum and decency, that they even made time to condemn memes and cartoons, right? If this was all in the context of them being very consistent on this issue, then maybe you might give them a little bit of what they want. You might say, sure, yeah, you shouldn't oppose to that. But that's not how it works. Their message is not that members of Congress should not incite violence. Um, not that Paul Gosar did incite violence, but that's not their message. Their message, the point they want Republicans to agree with, as they all clasp hands together, is that the rules should be applied based on their ideological and political needs of the moment. Which is why, for example, when Maxine Waters has repeatedly and explicitly called for violence against her political enemies, or squad members repeatedly and explicitly justify and foment BLM rioting. There's no condemnation there. Certainly no censure, because the rules are different for them. And anyone who will not agree that the rules are different is a nihilist, they say. It's all quite grotesque and outrageous, which is why Republicans uh, need to do a lot more than simply refuse to go along with it. That's a good first step. So there's a little bit of progress here. Um, because I think if this exact same situation had occurred like five years ago, uh, there probably would have been, you know, 30 Republicans joining at least. So they're not going along with it. That's good. But they should also be on the, on the offense, using the bully pulpit to call attention to behavior on the other side that often goes far beyond memes and cartoons. Just the latest example, Representative Cory Bush, like we talked about on this show, this week, called a defendant in a murder trial a white supremacist without any evidence. She's, of course, not the only one to have done that. And also without evidence, claimed that white supremacists shot at her in, uh, in the streets of Ferguson, which we know is a lie. It never happened. Why are Republicans moving to censure Cori Bush for that? Sure, they don't have the votes, but they can call for it anyway. Two can play at that game, but only one ever does. I think it's time for that to change. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.